Well, hey guys. So we're in the same shirt as the tapestry video. It's not because I'm gross and wear sh my shirts every single day. It's because I'm doing two videos in one day. So don't judge me. So I'm super excited about this. We have some onesie pajamas for an adult in my size. I'm just saying large, extra large. They're 100% cotton. I actually found these at Hobby Lobby because they're really hard to find. They were a little on the expensive side, but they're for me and I'm gonna wear them. So I'm all right with that, I guess. We're gonna do it. So, and they have a hood and they have pockets. Pockets. Like, who wouldn't be happier during quarantine? or during things getting closed down and you can't go anywhere, then onesie pajamas with pockets and a hood. So if you're cold, boom. So I'm winging these. I kind of played around just to see what I really wanted to do with these, but I feel like I got something cool. But if I change my mind in the middle of it, I'll let you know. So that's why I'm not telling you what we're doing. However, I'm definitely doing a cool design on the legs and I'm going to do the sleeves matching and something special for the torso and probably a scrunch for the hood. Sounds good. So we're going to start with the legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold him and her, him or her, whatever, in half. So they do have uh, seams on the outside so it makes it a little bit easier to match up but of course there's a seam on the back and we've got pockets to line up we've got legs to line up so it's not like it's you know it's not like you're gonna second guess it because there's only one way that these can line up and if they don't line up every way they're not lined up so we got the pants I'm just pushing stuff around right now, but I'm flattening these out, making sure that the hem part is going to match up with the other side. So the other pant part, pant leg, whatever, getting wrinkles out. Okay, so never mind because Apparently there's more on the back than there is on the front, or the front than the back. So we're just going to have to just flatten them out. Getting all the wrinkles out, like I said, we're putting the other pant leg on top. Match them up, get the wrinkles out. I'm going to repeat myself because I feel like it. All right, so the pant leg looks good to me. So I'm gonna kind of slide it off the edge of the table. Now for the torso, make sure that the inside is not crumpled on the inside. Like, so the back part of the pajamas it would be is really lined up with the front part of the pajamas. Because if that's pulled back at all, your the back of your pajamas are not going to look right at all. Keep moving up. So these stains that you keep randomly seeing, they're just from my table. Because this is my uh, do-everything table. I have other channels that I do things like paintings and drawings. So I have a lot of paint slash pastel chalk all over my tables and I try to clean them the best I can but it's hard with pastel chuck. The paint not so much it can dry no big deal. The pastel chuck I wipe this table down a million times and it still has pastel chalk on it. I cannot get rid of it. So the hood I don't really care about right now. I'm just lining up my sleeves so I'm coming off the camera for a second to line them up. 
So my table's not big enough for these pajamas, so I'm gonna have to slide this thing all over the place just to get where I need to go. But, all right, so the front of the pajamas is the side with the zipper. I want something cool to go from the bottom of the legs where your ankles are all the way up. Not all the way, I guess, probably up towards the stomach area. And I feel like a curvy pattern or like a zigzag pattern would look really cool on these for the legs. So I, that's why we're doing it in half so we can make sure that it's going to line up good. So I'm going to start at the bottom here. And I'm going to go in the middle, I think. No, we're going to start at the corner. So this is the front side. This is the back side. So I'm going to start at the corner of the back side. And I'm going to go zigzag. You can use a ruler if you want. I don't feel the need. So I am using a washable marker that will get washed out when you wash the dye out. So this is what I want to do. Now this is right at the bottom of the pajamas. So basically where your, uh, I don't really want to say anything bad on camera. So where your area is going to be, you know, the private to business area. So we're going to go up one more time and we might take up a little of the torso, but that's okay. It'll still look cool and go up one more time and then this will meet in the middle when we're done dyeing it. So it'll be a zigzag all the way up to here. And then we're going to tie those before we do anything else. That way that doesn't get messed up. So we're going to go back down to the bottom. And if you've seen any of my mandala videos, you know how this goes. I'm going to use sinew all the way up. One piece of sinew. I'm not going to cut it a million times. So we're going to speed through this a little bit, but I'm going to show you the very first one so you know what it looks like and how to do it. And then you can do the rest. And then we'll move on to the arms and then we'll do the rest. So we're going to pleat fold. It might be a little thick at first because uh, this bottom fabric is kind of like, you know, long john fabric. The rest of it's really thin cotton. So we're just going to pleat fold all the way to this corner. Make sure your marker lines up. Put your slip knot sinew over that to match it up. And then pull it tight, but not too tight so that you can fix it if you want to. So I'm about to adjust mine so that it matches closely. And then get rid of the slack in your sinew. Put your hand down on it and pull. Don't pull it too hard because if you pull it too hard, this is going to come right undone and then you're going to have to start over. So then once you got a little bit in there, I'm going to wrap this around three times. I don't know why I pick three times, but I always do three. I don't think two is enough and I think four is too much. So then pull it without snapping your sinew and then we're going to keep going. So then you're going to turn it and start all over again and keep going all the way up and just do it how you're comfortable. So like in this instance, I'm going to pleat fold it and then go over top and wrap it around and then pull it. Uh, so Basically, for the second part, I'm going to pleat fold it, wrap it around three times. I'm not going to wrap it around once this time because I already got my first part of the sinew on. So you can skip that part. Wrap it around three times, pull it, keep going. So pleat fold, wrap it around three times, pull it, and keep going. So we're going to speed through this part so we can get to the rest of it.
All right, you guys, so we got the legs tied up. I'm not gonna do anything extra. Uh, normally I would try to kite string these, but it's not necessary. Um, unless you're trying to do something specific. Uh, I don't think it really matters if you kite string them or not. If you want them tighter and you want maybe some white in there, then definitely go for it. But I just don't wanna, I wanna make sure that it's free and I can get down in there if I have to. So now we're gonna move on to the sleeves. So I kinda wanna do the same thing with the sleeves that I did with the legs. So I think we're gonna do the same exact thing. If you don't want to do the same exact thing, no big deal. You could, uh, let's see, you could do a squiggly pattern. You could literally do anything with it if you wanted to. You can put hearts down the arms, you can put butterflies, you can put diamonds. <clears throat> whatever you want to do, but I am going to zigzag again. So I'm going to start the same corner that I did with that one and work my way up. All the way until we get to the armpit. Or you can even do something cool with the chest if you really wanted to pull it all in together. I'm thinking of, I would definitely want to do like the same color scheme for the whole thing, maybe with a couple random throw-ins, you know? So, uh, no, nope, that's good. I'm not gonna do anything with the chest. We'll slide it back and start tying that one just like we did with the legs. So we'll get started on that. All right, you guys, so we have the legs and the arms done. Now we have a torso and a hood to do. Uh, you can do this any way that you want to do it. If you like hearts, you can put hearts in there. Uh, you can put literally whatever you want. But I figure because we did a zigzag pattern, I feel like a diamond would be really cool. So I'm going to show you how to do that too real quick. I'm not even worrying about the hood right now. So we'll just deal with the torso first and then whatever we decide to come up with with the hood, we'll do that. So we have a little bit of room to do the torso. So what we're gonna do is make sure that these are still lined up, the shoulders and the zipper area. So we're gonna pull this guy this way and fold him in half. The best that we can. I know we're gonna have to dye this. So we're gonna line up the we're not gonna put the zipper part all the way down at the end of the zipper because we don't have that much room. So we're just gonna do it to where the part is these parts can sit flat without bunching up. So I'm just kind of flattening this out. Now, a lot of people get confused by this part. So it's folded in half and folded in half again. So that's how you would start a diamond or an X pattern shirt. So basically what we're gonna do is for a diamond, you pleat fold this way. So from outside bottom to top uh, collar area. If you're going to do an X pattern, you would go from the shoulder to the very bottom center. So we want to do a diamond. So we are going to go from this corner up. 
Now, when you go to dye this, and you can always mark it with a marker if you want, so the very center is going to be the diamond, and then any color after that will be diamonds around your main diamond. So we're just gonna pleat fold from here to here and tie it up with some kite string. Actually, this might be a lot easier if we spin it around. So I'm gonna hold on to that fold and spin it this way so we can at least get the end of this done. And then if we have to, we'll spin it back around and do the other side. It'll work better, I think. So line it up with your marker line. And you got a zipper here, so you just kind of want to Watch that part, and you don't have to pull it super tight. You don't want it to bunch up on you, but do it enough to where you can let go of it. And then you can fix these pleats if you want to. So you can make sure that they're going throughout the rest of the uh, fold here. And then since you did that, you can kite string the rest of it. Just kind of going all the way down, and then you're going to go all the way back anyways. So, all the way down. So that it's held together really good. And then go try to go opposite of where your kite string was when you went down. So that it's got a nice hold on it. Alright, so now we have the rest of the diamond. Now you don't have to do anything here if you really don't want to, it does not matter. But if you try to pleat the rest of that, you're probably going to have a hard time because you have all these pleats that are connected to your pant legs and your sleeves. So here and here. And then you got this lovely hood that you got to try to do something with. So the only thing I can really say is leave it the way that it is and maybe scrunch it up just a tad and tie it. And then we can scrunch this up a little bit or you can swirl it. You can literally do whatever you want with the hood. You can add a heart in it. Uh, so we're going to kind of move the hood so that it's kind of out of the way. So I'm just gonna take the rest of my fabric and just let it do its thing. So pretty much it's gonna look cool because, let me just hear me out here. If you don't do really anything with it and you kite string it up so that it's nice and tight and you add colors to it, it's just gonna look like a scrunch. But the cool thing is, is the way that this fabric is, there's going to be a cool design in it. You don't know what it's going to be for sure, but it's going to have a cool design in it. This is when a lot of people see like eyes or random mouth or they see random little faces like animal faces and people see that stuff a lot. I'm a part of a lot of tie dye groups that see a lot of that stuff and I can always see it too. So it's kind of cool. And at this point, I'm just trying to contain all of this just in case you want to do a different color than your legs or in your uh, sleeves. Because you can. You can do whatever colors you want. I just don't really want brown in mine. So I'm going to try to be really careful of that. Uh, then I have some sinew right here, and it's kind of, for some reason, connected. So I'm going to put some kite string through there, and then we'll just have to try to separate it a little bit. Now my uh, original kite string is right here, so you can leave quite a bit if you want to cut it. And we're going to tie that to our original piece. And don't let your stuff bunch up. I always tell you that, just tie it tight enough that it'll hold it for you. 
So I'm gonna cut it a little bit. And then we have the hood. So now we gotta figure out something to do with the hood. So my favorite color is lime prime green and I pretty much always try to find a way to use it. So I really wanna go with that color but I definitely don't wanna make brown or anything. So definitely no red, no purple, no orange. So it kind of eliminates a lot of color choices. It kind of sucks. All right, you guys. So now we got the hood and I think uh, we're gonna go with a random little scrunch. So give me one second. Don't mind my random hemostats. I have blue rubber bands that would be perfect for this because they're the smallest and the tightest ones and it's really thin fabric so excuse the bag rustling you don't need very many I mean you can kite string it if you want to but it's not necessary so I'm just gonna scrunchy scrunchy And we got these blue rubber bands and they're nice and tight. So if it bunches up a little, that's okay. Or you can use whatever rubber bands you got. I know the tie-dye kits come with them. They're uh, great and all, but they're not uh, amazing is probably the word. Uh, they snap really easy. So like, uh, uh, the white ones. You'll know what I'm talking about. I don't know if I can even say the brand, but I don't see why not because I say everything else on here. So I just got a scrunch going on. Don't have to be special or anything like that. You can do whatever. It's just gonna be the hood. I mean, like I said, you can add whatever you want to it. You can make it a heart, you can put butterflies, you can do whatever you want. So let's just do an overview. So we have the legs, we have the sleeves, we have the uh, diamond, then this is the rest of the torso, which is basically, so this is the center, which will be right here. And then the rest is the rest on the outside that leads to everything else. And then the hood is scrunched. The back is scrunched, or not the back, sorry. The rest of it is scrunched. So now, if you have a specific die placement that you want, just make sure you know exactly where you're gonna do it. So for me, the zipper area is right here on the pants. So whatever color I want to come up to that to be on the very outside of that that's what i would do so you would just do whatever you want so you'll see me dye it if you like the way that i do it you can do it my way or you can do it your own way so we will be back for the dyeing process i am going to let this dry out uh, so that it doesn't bleed as much but if it's ice dyed, it doesn't really matter. So I'll let you know as soon as I know what I'm doing with it. All right, you guys, we got our awesome pajamas sitting here, ready to go. It sat overnight. It's still a little damp, but not damp like we just took it out of soda ash. So uh, this is ready. We are gonna put colors on here. Now you can pick your own favorite colors if you want. Uh, most of you that watch my channel know that probably my favorite tie dye color is Lime Pop Green from Dharma Trading Company. It is my absolute favorite because I love it and it looks like a nice electric looking green to me. So I love it, it's my favorite. So, and I'm a big fan of ice dye as you know too. If you don't know and you're new, you'll learn that. I love ice dye, it's super fun. And you never know what you're gonna get half the time. So I like that. So I have three colors today. They're all Dharma colors. I have Lime Pop Green. I have Robin's Egg Blue, which I also love. And I have Royal Blue from Dharma, which you can't really see because it looks black, which the powder pretty much is black. So 
I am going to spoon all the dye wherever I want it. Um, I have actually a plan in my head. So if you want to follow along and if you're using the same colors or maybe just three different colors. So my base plan was from my marker line, all this scrunch and the hood. I'm going to do lime pop green. Then from the marker line this way, I'm going to do a row of royal blue, then a row of robin's egg blue, then the rest of it lime pop. Then, because this is all lime pop, I'm going to go alternate colors here and I'm going to do this is lime pop, then both sides is going to be robin's egg and then alternate them. So robin's egg, lime pop, robin's egg, lime pop, robin's egg, lime pop, robin's egg, lime pop, robin's egg. So they should, I think I did pretty much the same amount on each on the, the pant legs and the sleeves. So it should come out pretty even, but that is my plan. So right after you get all the dye on there, if you want to throw a little bit of soda ash powder over top and sprinkle it, that can help depending on your dyeing situation, where you're living, what the temperature's like, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if not, that's okay too. So you're going to put all of your dye on. Then after you do that, you are going to make sure that if you're going to use a lot of ice like I'm about to because this thing is weird and it's tied weird and it's it's a thin fabric but it takes up a lot of space. So I'm going to be using a ton of a ton of ice. So I'm actually using a Rubbermaid tote. It's pretty deep and it has an elevated rack in it, which it's like a kitchen rack you would get. So basically, before I even put ice on it, I actually pick this rack up out, my baking rack up out of the shoe tray. I put it in my Rubbermaid toe on top of the elevated shelf and then make sure it's secure and it's not moving all over the place. And then you can put your ice on and then you can put the Rubbermaid lid on. That way it'll help it keep it moist. Uh, and it'll be out of the way. You can put it off in a corner somewhere, just somewhere where your kids aren't going to knock it over because that would be a mess. I have not had that happen yet, but I am sure it will, and then I will kick myself in the booty for it. So that is what we're going to do, and then after you do all of that, you're going to let it sit for 24 hours, and then after that, you're going to rinse it in cold water to get rid of the soda ash. Then you can warm up the water a little bit and that will help get rid of all the dye. Squeeze it in the sink, get all the dye out until it's clear, and then you're ready to open it with me. So let's get started and I will see you at reveal time. Hey guys, it's reveal time. So I'm super excited because look how awesome this looks. I know it's a big old hot mess, but these pajamas are gonna be super duper awesome. So if you watch the dyeing part, we use lime pop, uh, rabbit's egg blue, royal blue, and that is it. So we're probably gonna have to speed this up just a tad because there's a lot to unravel here, but before I do, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do, because there's tons of other stuff that we're going to be doing soon. You're not going to want to miss it because Christmas is coming up. And I know it sounds like I'm 
kind of skipping Thanksgiving, but that's because I kind of am. <laughs> I cannot wait for Christmas. It's one of my favorite things ever. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell, turn it to all, and then you will be notified every time we post a video. And that's awesome because you're not going to want to miss it. It's just, I give you a second. Awesome. So we're going to speed this up just a little bit, but you can watch me make funny faces as the camera goes super fast. Okay, I am ready. Finally. Sorry. Takes so long. So, slow mo, kinda. Okay. So, we ice dyed this, so there is some different stuff going on, but I really, really like it. It turned out so good. So, the hood we scrunched with Lime Pop. So, we got the hood. And now, we'll wait for it. Are you ready for this? We got a cool diamond with lime pop, rabbit's egg blue, and royal blue. And then the rest of it is green. Now check the sleeves out. You got a crisscross pattern. So when you go to put your arm in here, it'll look like kind of X's all the way down. Pretty awesome. And I love the legs. Wait for the legs. Look at the legs, you guys. That looks awesome. The legs are my favorite by far out of all of it. So, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So if you don't have a pair of these, you can check at Hobby Lobby. That is where I've gotten mine, but I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. And if I haven't already put it in the links below, I will very soon so that you can make the same thing or whatever you want. And thank you so much for watching. This is super awesome to sit and drink coffee in whenever I have a day off. But thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time and happy tie-dyeing.